Hello everyone, yes, uh, I have already done a Christmas video, you're right, this isn't really a second one. If you haven't seen my actual Christmas video, I'll put a link to it and go and check it out. Um, but uh, that neatly segues into the fact that um, I've still got some charity prints for sale, so I'll put a link to my website below where you can purchase them. You might not get them in time for the big day now, but 100% um, uh, of the profits go to a charity of your choice and Christmas is a time for giving. So um, there's no video of me going out and about taking photographs this week. Uh, it's Christmas time, there's a lot going on, I've got a lot of food to prepare um, and presents to buy, I just haven't really got into that state yet. But actually I did try and go out and record a video this week, however um, I have to be honest and say that I struggled. Struggling, struggling quite a bit. Had a hard time finding something here. Still nothing, but I'm still walking around. It's okay to have a bad day or to come away with nothing. Just nothing worked out for me. So you end up with this. Um, what I'm going to do is a bit of a Lightroom tutorial. Now, it's uh, not a, a, a tutorial of how I edit my normal images. It's just a tutorial about how you can add a bit of interest to some otherwise boring images and it would be something great you can do whilst, uh, whilst you're off over Christmas and, uh, and you're too lazy or full of mince pies to go out and take some new photos. But don't worry, it's nothing too complicated. It's a few simple changes which will definitely add some drama, some mood and some punch to some, uh, some of your images that you might think are otherwise dull. But uh, before that, I just wanted to announce the winner of my 1000 subscriber print contest. So I got a lot of comments and I read through them all and some of them are, are really interesting to see, people's opinions and that kind of thing. But what surprised me the most was um, that some people shared some very personal stories that were actually quite moving and uh, I've been trying to think of some sort of way that I might be able to incorporate them in a, a video uh, in the new year but I haven't quite worked that out yet so watch this space for that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, I couldn't pick a comment myself, there was just too many good ones and I would have loved to have sent a print to everybody but uh, financially I'm just not really in a position that I could do that. So um, uh, I picked the winner at random and so the winner uh, was Michael Hillard who is already enjoying his print, he's received it already. He picked the tree in the mist that I captured in Whiteham Wood which is just up the hill from me here. Um, so uh, once again thank you everybody uh, who subscribed, thanks for watching and supporting my channel and thank you for comments uh, that you made and entering the competition. Um, it, uh, it's, it's really meant a lot to me. Um, on that note, if you're not subscribed to my channel and you watch regularly, then please consider doing so. Um, if you like what you see in this video, then give it a thumbs up and a comment. And if you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so that you get notifications every time I put a new upload out. So uh, I'm going to get myself a drink and then we'll get set up and do the Lightroom tutorial. Let's get started. First of all, Christmas is a great time for mucking about with old photos. You can go upstairs whilst the family are downstairs rowing and you can try this technique on some of the images you've caught from the past just to see if it works for you. Um, but first of all, you need to grab yourself a drink of whatever's been left over and uh, an open Lightroom and bring in some of your images into a collection. So let's get cracking. Mm. So I've already put a few uh, just fairly regular landscape photography images into a collection here and I've got them uh, open in Lightroom. And um, they're not in any particular order but I'm going to start with this one because uh, it's a fairly low contrast image and that's the type of image that works best for this technique. So if I hit D to go into the develop module. So this is uh, taken from White Horse Hill uh, which is close, uh, close to me. Um, that's an ancient chalk horse that's been carved into a hillside owned by the National Trust. Um, as you can see it's fairly uh, evenly exposed and you can see that from the histogram up here uh, maybe a little bit on the dark side or we could obviously pull that up with the uh, with the exposure 
but um, but the sky's quite bright, the foreground's quite bright, and it's pretty uninteresting apart from that. Um, it's an interesting subject because this hill is uh, is really fascinating, nice place to visit. But um, the first thing that I will do, and normally in Lightroom you would start from the top and work your way down, but here I'm going to go straight to the curve, so the tone curve, and, uh, and I'm going to uh, just do a couple of small changes and you'll really see the dramatic effect from there. So the very first thing that I will do is uh, bring in the black point right up to the mid-tones and I'm going to keep sliding until I start seeing something that I think is going to look alright. I think around about there. Um, and what you can see is that the, all the midpoint tones in the image have gone really dark and that what I'm left with are highlights. So this is a great way of adding in additional contrast that just wasn't there at the time. So if you can't make it out for golden hour when the contrast makes things look interesting, you can kind of fake it on Lightroom like this. But the image as it is now looks a bit weird. It looks kind of oversaturated even though it wasn't initially and uh, and I need to fix that. But what I've found to, here to do is I can pull the saturation right down and leave the vibrance up, maybe still leave it there and uh, and then I start to get this kind of grimy, moody looking tone to it. So it's ever so slightly greeny yellow in the grassy areas and uh, and sort of looks quite effective. Um, I'm also going to bring the clarity down because then that starts to add a slight dreamy effect to it um, which you can kind of see there and that's the sort of uh, uh, the, the feel that I'm going with this one. What I might actually do from this point is just muck about with the highlights and the shadows just to see if I can change uh, change anything much there. Not really. I might actually bring the new mid-tones up a bit and uh, and then slide that the blacks back in and I might just bring the shadows up and then fix it all back down to the moodiness that I'm after with the exposure. So it's still quite colourful so I'm actually going to pull back the uh, the vibrance and uh, leave it about there. Now I, down here I've got a, a bit of a dark patch and I can just fix that with a local adjustment and I'll take the local adjustment brush which is at the top there, uh, slide the exposure down, uh, sorry up a bit and then paint over it. Now it doesn't matter if I've over egged it here if it looks like it's a bit too much uh, because I can always fix that on the brush itself afterwards. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I had the flow not set to full there, so it will just paint it more and more and more I paint on, if that makes sense. Um, but I'm going to pull that back a little bit because I still want it to be a bit in shadow and want it to be in keeping with the rest of the image. What doesn't really work with this one is the sky, so I'm just going to fix that with the crop and I will pull that down, unlock this so I've got a custom and uh, maybe just leave it at something like that Then I've got <coughs> the curve of the hill in the bottom, uh, bottom th uh, third, bottom quadrant and uh, yeah and that's that image as you can see, um, it went from something that was low contrast, fairly ordinary looking landscape to something that's really quite dramatic. Might not be your cup of tea this style, but it's Christmas and this is something different. But if we look at what it was before and after, you can see what, we, what we've managed to achieve. You can obviously fine tune it with contrast to try and make it glow or pop a little bit, bit more bring that black point back, maybe bring the mid-tones mid back and just leave the highlights showing. Um, but yeah, you can play around with it. Then it's up to you what you do with it. You can do, uh, you can mess around with the HSL sliders or you can add a uh, tint to the highlights. And what I found works quite often is a slightly sort of goldish yellow tint to the highlights. Okay, so I'll do one more just to demonstrate um, images where this technique doesn't necessarily always work. 
um, and that's uh, uh, if the image already has a lot of contrast in it. So I'll bring up this one of a, uh, a, a willow tree hanging over the Thames. And if I, uh, if I do the same thing where I pull the blacks in um, into where the mid-tones are, whoopsie, too much red wine. Uh, then you can see that the blacks really just start to clip too much and it becomes a bit of a mess. It's not necessarily uh, lost here and if I do some of the same things with the, the colour then I might actually regain something so I'll bring down vibrance and, uh, and saturation and it, it starts to look like a high contrast black and white image but I think for me it's more of the uh, low contrast images where you uh, where you start to actually bring shadow into places uh, leaving only the highlights that, uh, that then show up and then it starts to really bang. This is the final one I'm doing, I promise. I'm going to bring up the shadows on this one so you can see the valley uh, that's formed um, and you start to get the idea the grass glows at the front here, whereas before it, um, it was the same as everything else. So I hope you've enjoyed that um, and, uh, and I hope you have some fun editing some old photos in new ways over the Christmas period. And, uh, and once again, thanks for watching. If you, uh, if you did like this video, then let me know. Maybe I'll do some more tutorials in the new year. Um, but uh, in the meantime, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to click the bell if you want to see a notification every time I put a new upload out. Um, all that's left to be said is uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.